Greetings, I'm Neil and this is my amazing wife, Nolene. We lead the church in Port Elizabeth. Um, the church is now about 31 years old and it was established somewhat differently to other churches. Uh, and it started really with Nolene's conversion in Cape Town, which she will share with us. Hi everybody. So uh, my sister and her husband became disciples in Cape Town shortly after the church was planted there. That was at the end of 1989. They were baptized into Christ and immediately my sister reached out to me. Um, she started sending me some of the Bible studies and when I went down to Cape Town to visit them in the June holidays of 1990, I studied the Bible there. And it was there that I made Jesus Lord. I was baptized into Christ on a Friday evening and I flew back to Port Elizabeth on the Saturday. Um, as Neil says, you know, we, we see that God was really the one who decided that there would be a mm -hmm. church in Port Elizabeth because it wasn't planted in the normal way that church, churches would be planted. Obviously, there's a lot that I've forgotten through the years, especially the timelines. Mm -hmm. But um, church was in my home. Mm -hmm. I was the only disciple in, as part of the ICOC in Port Elizabeth at that time. And um, God did provide another young um, girl who was converted in the UK, in London, who was here for um, part of the time. In, at towards the end of 1990 and we became friends and started reaching out to people. So um, Marissa, who's a faithful sister as well, she was converted in at right at the beginning of 1992 in a very similar way to me, also on holiday in Cape Town where she was asked to study the Bible by friends and she can remember that she was the eighth disciple um, who became a part of our little group in Port Elizabeth. And she remembers that we were meeting in my home. We were especially taking the Lord's Supper together. That was really, really special for us. We were a very young group, especially most of the, the conversions had been young people. And um, we also started receiving um, sermon tapes from Cape Town who sent them to us. Prior to that, my sister had handwritten every sermon that there was, every midweek that there was, and she'd sent these to me to encourage me. And um, every opportunity I got, you know, when we went down to Cape Town, I would go to the services and get encouragement. And there were a lot of brothers and sisters at that time who got to hear about me and who would write me letters to encourage me. And um, it was really... Um, just my deep convictions um, and God's Spirit who continually convicted me that kept me faithful, especially during those you know first years when it was difficult because um, Neil didn't understand this decision I'd made. And so we certainly had some conflict over the decision I'd made. Um, I'm really grateful though that God kept me faithful during that time. I do remember a very special time, which was probably in 19, either towards the end of 1992 or 1993, I can't remember specifically, but we were meeting in a school foyer mm -hmm. and we hit 12 disciples, which was so encouraging for us. You know, we were now the number of the apostles and we had a dream yeah. to be able to, at some stage, fill that hall. And it's amazing how many years later we actually did go back to that school and we did go into the hall and um, we didn't quite fill the hall, but we substantially um, filled some of it and we certainly would not have been able to fit into the, the foyer anymore. Mm -hmm. So um, at that stage when we were in the foyer, you know, it was really just very exciting for us. We um, met together and encouraged one another. But we were certainly very mission-minded, and um, mm. we started having Women's Days and things like that. Um, so many wonderful memories over those years. And, and I see how God was really um, molding me in those years and deepening my conviction 
at that time while Neil was still trying to figure out whether mm. this was something he wanted to do. Um, obviously, I cried out to God a lot mm. during that time. I reasoned with God. I, um, yeah, I really prayed so much for Neil and for our family, especially because obviously I knew uh, my children were important. I wanted them to be disciples as well. And I knew Neil and I being partners in the gospel was something that was really going to help them. So um, I was so deeply grateful and blown mm. away when um, Neil was baptized into Christ. But that is his story to tell. <laughs> right. Yeah, and Aline had a super quick conversion. I had a super long one. She took days, I took years, uh, seven years, in fact. Um, yeah, and you know, I could tell a very long story, but essentially I was loved into the family. Um, I saw relationships, especially between the men that I desired. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know how to do relationships. Still learning, I guess. <laughs> um, but just to see, um, firstly, a very diverse church impacted me big time. You know, this was 24 years ago. Um, yeah, you know, it was very unusual to see multicultural sort of churches. Mm -hmm. So that, that blew me away. Um, there were a few men in particular that reached out to me that had a huge, made a huge difference. David Peden, some of you might know, he came through from Cape Town. Very relatable, really reached out to me, became a good friend. And then I do want to mention the Lama Kabangesi, Nom Teto's late husband. He led the church here for a while and we built a great friendship. Mm -hmm. um, we would exchange stories when I was in the defense force and he was in the police force under the days of apartheid and his amazing grace and forgiveness towards uh, the oppressors back then really blew me away. We became great family friends. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, that certainly had had a huge impact on me. Um, he sadly died, uh, passed on much too young. Um, but uh, at w when he died, that actually convicted me more to make Jesus Lord. Uh, such was the impact he had. Um, there were other things going on at, with my career. Um, I struggled to uh, make Jesus Lord. I pretty much worshipped my career, and yeah. You know, qualifications and education and being uh, yeah kind of a senior guy in my company but um, thankfully with Nolene's prayers uh, that I only heard about afterwards um, I was able to make Jesus Lord. Nolene just very briefly she actually prayed that God would humble me uh, he did that big time he took my health away from me in my late 30s <laughs> had a minor heart attack uh, suffered from high anxiety syndrome uh, but in hindsight, um, I'm really grateful that Nolene did pray that prayer. Mm -hmm. Then, um, you know, various people came to lead the church in PE, um, including the Fix, Rod and Linda Fick, who had a huge impact on the church. Uh, Lulama probably had the greatest impact, making me a disciple, getting me to the waters of baptism, although he wasn't present to witness that. Uh, Rod Fick continued to make me a disciple. I learned such a lot from him, just his love for people, how to do relationships. Rod also sadly um, passed on tragically, much too young. Mm -hmm. And that's when, uh, yeah, Nolene and I really took the baton of, of leadership, church leadership. Um, and that was about 13 years ago. Mm -hmm. The truth is that Nolene actually leads the church and I support her, but don't, don't tell anyone. <laughs> Not true. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mm. So... What's the we next have question? Some questions that were, were given to us. Um, yeah, so let me ask you, what um, scriptures help you to persevere? What particular scripture do you have any? Because I, you've, you've persevered a lot, as Nadine said. She certainly has. Yes. Let me just add that Nadine was also a, a huge influence on me. Just seeing her, her level of perseverance and putting up with all of my nonsense uh, certainly uh, helped me to make Jesus Lord as well. Yeah, I think um, the whole Bible really is just so amazing. I, I've, um, I love the scriptures, but I think definitely there have been certain passages which have stood out for me and helped me over the years really just become key scriptures. And one for me is in Hebrews 12, um, from verse 1 to verse 3, where it says, um, As for us, we have all of these great witnesses who encircle us like clouds, so we must let go of every wound that has pierced us and the sin we so easily fall into. Then we will be able to run life's marathon race with passion 
and determination for the path has been marked, already marked out before us. We look away from the natural realm and we focus our attention and expectation onto Jesus who has birthed faith within us and who leads us forward into faith's perfection mm. or that wholeness. His example is this because his heart was focused on the joy of knowing that you would be his. He endured the agony of the cross and conquered its humiliation and now sits exalted at the right hand of the throne of God. So consider carefully how Jesus faced such intense opposition from sinners who opposed their own souls so that you won't become worn down and cave in under life's pressure. You know, that's one of the, the verses that um, has really helped me to hold on, to focus, um, to keep my eyes focused on Jesus when I so often mm. realize that um, I've lost that focus. Him being the one who is the reason for my faith, he's blazed that trail. Um, yeah, and it's, it's him who will, who will lead me to be with him one day as well. Mm. And how about you? Yeah, um, one of my favorite scriptures, um, you know, when I feel like uh, things are a little bit too much and I feel a bit overwhelmed, it's uh, really reading Revelation, especially Revelation 24, uh, the new heaven and the new earth. And verse 4 speaks about a time when God will wipe away every tear, death shall be no more, um, and there'll be no more mourning or crying or pain. It helps me just to uh, to get the big picture, to remind myself that God, you know, that God is faithful um, to his promises and God is busy restoring all things. And what we are going through now is, is temporary. So it just helps me to keep, uh, yeah, just to realize and remember mm. that God is moving his story forward and that, mm. and that it's, it's going to end well. Mm. That's right. Yeah, I think one of the other things that uh, we like to wonder about is an event in the Bible that you would have liked to witness and, and why. Um, certainly for me, Neil and I were chatting about this mm -hmm. last night. And um, for me, definitely the resurrection of Jesus. I cannot um, imagine another mm -hmm. more incredible um, event to actually witness with my own eyes. Obviously, it would really be nice to have had one of the angels mm -hmm bird's eye views as Jesus was raising up and just really, um, yeah, those grave clothes falling away from him and the stone being rolled away. Um, yeah, so for me, I think that that whole encounter, mm. obviously, of him then appearing, um, being part of those people who were in the room and him just appearing in the room, um, having does. walked through well, the door, <laughs> walked that, right through. That would have been amazing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but then seeing him see. actually eating the right. fish yeah. and speaking mm -hmm. and showing his his mm -hmm. marks, you know, um, mm -hmm. that would have been absolutely amazing. There, there are a lot yeah. of others I can think there of. A lot, but, yeah. Yeah, you? yeah, I was thinking certainly one of the events I would have loved to witness was, uh, was the Exodus, mm -hmm. um, just the parting of the Red Sea, how amazing that must have been. Mm -hmm. And uh, God's people walked, uh, you know, through the Red Sea on dry land. Uh, that just speaks to me of God's amazing power, mm -hmm. um, His faithfulness, and His and His sovereignty. You know, God God is moving His story forward, and the Exodus is such an important part of that. I, I would have loved to be part of the Exodus. <laughs> yeah, so certainly just some reflections on the pandemic and what we found to be the greatest challenge mm -hmm. during this time. Um, I think one of the things we found really challenging is the fact that we're so used to face-to-face -face connections. We're mm -hmm. so used to being together physically. And in this time when we were not able to meet physically, it really led to um, many, many people, including ourselves, mm -hmm. struggling to connect yeah. with one another. In PE specifically, not everybody has access to be able to use Zoom. Mm -hmm. So you often don't really know how people are doing. You don't know what their struggles are. Mm -hmm. you, you don't always know really how especially they're doing spiritually with not being as plugged in as we are used to them being. So I think that really has been has been by far the biggest challenge. Um, thankfully, right now we can meet together as a church, which is mm -hmm. amazing. 
Um, but yeah, it's, it's still kind of like now you're sort of picking up the pieces mm -hmm. of starting to meet together and pulling people in and trying to encourage those who are afraid still mm -hmm. to come out. So it's still definitely challenging, but um, we see a little bit of light mm -hmm. at the Absolutely. end of the tunnel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and I, th I think you put it well. Um, okay, then finally, why, why should you come and visit Port Elizabeth? Um, Port Elizabeth has recently been renamed Kabecha. Okay, we mm -hmm. kind of use the two names uh, interchangeably, I guess, but uh, we'd love you to visit Kabecha for a number of reasons. It is a beautiful city. Mm -hmm. um, as we speak to you, the wind is howling outside. The wind's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, it keeps the air nice and fresh and clean. Mm -hmm. True. Uh, but it's a, it's, it's, it's a friendly city. I think it's one of the best kept secrets in, mm -hmm. um, in, in South Africa. We have lovely beaches, a well-developed beachfront, not over the yes. top. Uh, we have a wonderful coastline that is in good condition. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, the people in the city are, are friendly. Mm -hmm. um, the church is regarded by everybody who visits us as being a very family-oriented church. Mm -hmm. We are close. You know, COVID has affected that, as Nadine said, to mm -hmm. some extent, but we are still a close-knit group. Mm -hmm. uh, we are a smallish group. And uh, we really uh, cherish and work on, on relationships. So mm -hmm. you'll be very welcome if you had to visit us. We are grateful for uh, mm -hmm. you have visited us over the years. Mm -hmm. uh, we miss those times when the singles would come through on campus from mm -hmm. Cape Town and, and, and Joburg and, and Durban. And we do look forward to you visiting us again. That's right. Um, but yeah, I think just as you look at our church and our needs as well, we are still a, a small church, a relatively small church with about mm -hmm. 70 members, certainly relative to the size of our city. Mm -hmm. So there is much work to do. Um, yeah, the, uh, the harvest is plentiful and the work is off you. Mm -hmm. So if you do want to come and visit us for a short visit or an extended visit, you will be most welcome. Absolutely. <laughs> so yeah, thanks for listening to us and uh, God bless. God bless. Bye.